Hello, hello, hello. Um, this week, I am joined by the Reverend Haley Ace, who um, was very sweet to me. Uh, just after Christmas, I went to an exhibition called The Tunnels, which Haley helped organise uh, and arrange. And as part of the viewing of the exhibition, there was the um, bearing of witness to the footage that... Uh, was collated ten, it was just ten percent of the uh, of the overall footage, including Hamas body cams and various things. And it's really struck me. I mean, I was an absolute mess, and Haley very kindly um, helped me out afterwards um, in a motherly way because I couldn't stop shaking. I couldn't hold a cup of coffee. Um, anyway, Haley, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, Seriously. <laughs> Um, you are part of Christian Action Against Antisemitism. Yes. So my husband and I founded Christian Action Against Antisemitism about 12 years ago. And um, do you want me to tell you a bit yeah, about tell, it? Tell, yeah. us, tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us a bit about Christian okay. Action. Yeah. So I'll start for myself then yeah. and work out. So I am um, I am a reverend in the Christian church, uh, evangelical. And I was raised by missionary parents. I'm from New Zealand. And we went to Africa and my parents did a lot of work with the poor. We were given this amazing big mansion. And my mum said, no, we come to help the people. We don't, we can't help the people if we don't know what it's like for them. We're going to live in a mud hut. So <laughs> she moved us into the slums. We lived in a mud hut and it was amazing. They set up this huge uh, charity for um, street children, which then became the largest orphanage in um, Kenya and actually in um, at East Africa. Wow. Yeah. And it was about educating. So I was around kind of lots of giving and charity work growing up. Then we moved to England. Uh, my parents said, we feel God's telling us to come to England. So we landed here and then we just stayed at the airport. Well, my parents were like, Lord, where should we go? And we <laughs> sat for about five hours on my mom's guitar. They were waiting for God to tell them where they should go in England. And so we just sat there and we were just hanging out and a um, Australian walked over because have you seen those fish signs that some Christians have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, he said, oh, you guys Christians? And we just started chatting. And he said, why don't you come and live with me? So then we <laughs> went and lived with him in Norfolk in this big Tudor mansion. And it was very strange coming from a mud hut, you know, on the equator, 50 degrees, then in Norfolk in this sort of Tudor period house, completely wow. different culture. You know, I was raised around the poor, very poor. Um, huge poverty and then suddenly coming into a Western civilization where everyone has everything and then seem to moan about a lot. Mm. It was really countercultural for me because my whole childhood had been well, they had poverty. To, are you saying that in the po when you're around poverty, people were much more appreciative and sort of... Yes, yeah, yeah happier, so. appreciated the thing that they had. They might have one toy to share in the family and they would be kind with it, sharing, giving. You know, sometimes we would walk for three hours, you know, for a long, long time into the jungle. And people would, we, we actually, we went to this one place and there was one chicken. They had one chicken. There was a bit of a starvation thing going on there. And we were just passing through and we had snacks and they insisted on killing the chicken and feeding us. Oh my Lord. Yeah, and they hadn't had any meat. And so we had to eat it because they went to the trouble of preparing it. And when they p gave me mine, I got the feet. So well, they were like, oh, delicacy. There is something quite interesting about that, isn't there? The fact that people with pe people whose lives are more raw and in your face yeah. and real seem to find less to get upset about because yeah. life is, is is much more real. Yes. Um, t so tell us tell us about the the tunnels. Uh, what it is, and then and and tell us why you're so passionate. So start off about about the exhibition. Okay, so the exhibition was organised by um, a group, a movement called the Human Chain, the Seven Ten Human Chain, which was established after the atrocities of October the seventh, and the purpose is non-political, and it's very much about let's remember that there are hundreds of that were hundreds before some of them were released in that hostage deal, um, hundreds of innocent people in that were taken by invaders after they slaughtered, raped, unalived thousands, um, hurt lots of people, well, 1,200 people they actually killed, and people are seeming to forget that. And we don't want people to forget the fact that this is 
these, this is real happening right now. So it was, um, the idea was to create an environment based on testimony of the hostages that returned so that people could really appreciate and see and try and understand what is actually going on because this whole ha- seems so confusing to people. It was just the, the, the most horrible bit of that for me was the bit where the kid, one of the kids was put in yeah. front of a TV and forced to watch the same footage that we watched. I can't imagine what that would do no. to a kid's, to, to a child's brain. The trauma. Um, so the footage itself, why do you think people say it's propaganda? I, I don't know. I think um, because there is so much information, people are now confused on what to believe. And because the Jewish population in the world is only 0.2% of the world population, there's only about 15 million Jews in the whole world. And they have this tiny little country, which is only nine miles wide at one part of it. And it's in the middle um, of the Middle East, surrounded by lots of other nations that want to see their demise. And so when you have got um, an overwhelming Arab population versus a very small, where there's two million, two billion, I think, um, Muslims, which are kind of, they support each other, obviously, you know, we all try and support each other's religions when we're in that religion. Um, but then you've only got a very quiet voice. It just gets lost in the feed. And people generally have this mob mentality, I believe, that if everyone's saying it, then it must be true. Mm. And I, I was reading this morning again, you know, because obviously we've seen uh, Sadiq Khan today has said, well, we'll get on. He said, <laughs> you know, not only are we an anti-racist <clears throat> city in London, we're also anti-Semitic. You yeah. know, like, you said the quiet part out loud, mate, yes, didn't you? Exactly. Anti-racism is terrible. Um, but this this thing where the huge spike in anti-Semitic attacks, mm-hmm. and you know, certainly in this city where it's basically, as far as I'm concerned, it's your it's a free pass yeah. to be anti-Semitic. Some of the things I've heard at marches <clears> and <throat> protests and stuff like that. Um, but what interested me was they said that the 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 rise spike in anti-Semitic attacks happened before Israel had responded. That's right. So that says to me something that there was it was just beneath the surface yeah. and it wanted to come out. What, what do you think that indicates? That that we've got this sudden burst of anti-Semitism like it was sort of waiting to come out. What, yeah. what do you think it says about our society? Well, I think Stephen Fry was right when he said it's a light sleeper. Anti-Semitism is almost like a... Um, is seems to be in so many people like a disease and it just lays dormant waiting for a socially acceptable way to express itself and where we are as a society I believe is um, very much you can tell where a society is by how we treat the Jewish people they're like the canary in the coal mine Um, and we have come so far away from having any sense of in terms of okay wait forget that in terms of society like how what does it mean that we are is that what you're saying well what what, what do you think it, it it shows about where we are in 2024 so we have an attack which yeah. even the most you know i mean some there's some crazy theories about all this stuff and actually i did say to someone who was very skeptical about all of this Footage. I said, well, why don't you come along? Because I haven't seen it. I'm going with an open mind. You know, yeah, if yeah. you're going to tell me that it's complete um, propaganda, then I'm, I'll be open-minded about it and I'll watch it. But they refuse to go with me, the person. And um, but we're left with this with this 2024, where it's okay to be anti-Semitic. And I wonder what that says about us as a, as a society. Do you think it's the sign you said the canary in the coal mine? Do you think yeah. it's a sign that society is is fracturing? Yes, I do. But I also believe that Jew hatred is something that's not new. No. You know, 500 years, it was it was a different reason to hate them. 100 years ago, it was a different reason. There's every generation, there is a reason to hate the Jews. Even during the Black Plague, they didn't catch it because um, Jewish ritual requires cleansing in the mitzvah and um, immersion, washing, and so they didn't catch it. Mm. And then they were blamed for that. They've been blamed for 9-11. It's always the Jews' fault. And I think because 
the anti-Semitism that has been established in society for for 1600 years, starting in Christianity, many of these tropes, I think it's just very deep, deeply set inside people's psyche. And you just need one thing and it's the Jews rule the world or the Jews this, the Jews that. You told me, you were telling me something interesting about the um, civil rights movement, about yeah. Martin Luther King, which uh, I, I didn't understand, which I'd never heard before. What, what yeah. was that? So the speechwriter for Martin Luther King recently came out and said, um, we would never the have... The guy that wrote the speech, I have a dream. That yes, speech, exactly, right? that guy. He said, we would have never pushed through the um, Civil Rights Act or the voting rights for the black community if it was not for the Jews because the Jews stood by the black community. 50% of that crowd on the March for Freedom was the Jewish community because they understand oppression. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And then we get to 2024 and we're all yeah. meant to be progressive yes. and all of that, and you get BLM. Yeah, and they stood by with BLM. They were big advocates for that because in Judaism, it's all about being the light. Mm. When, when God ordained, when Abraham began, when that's all the way back in, you know, 5,000 years, whatever, um, it was be the light. You are the light and be the light and you're going to be a blessing to the world. So this is just ingrained in Judaism to be a blessing and to do good. So generally, that's what they do. Yeah. And then at a time, you know, like October the 7th, you, you have October the 8th in Sydney saying gas the Jews or... Where's the Jews? It's just so bizarre. In, in countries that are bringing in hate speech laws, <clears throat> yeah. this is allowed to have been done. Yeah. And you, you went to the kibbutz. Which, yes. Kibbutz, and t t tell us about that, because you, you, you were saying that the, there was really, the, there was a lot of love between the yeah. two peoples in that kibbutz. Could de yeah. Describe what the, describe yeah, what the yeah, houses yeah. were like and the people that worked there and things like that. It was, um, so I went to the um, Kafar Azar kibbutz, which is, you could actually see Gaza. It was about a mile away. And I saw the devastation that was left behind because Hamas came in first, then it was the civilians, you know, the innocent civilians. And this community was like a paradise. It's more, it's more sort of the lifestyle of a lefty, um, hippie at one with the world, or let's all just be friends, peace, love, utopia. It was like a utopia world. And they very much believed in let's just take down the wall let's just all be friends so most of the hand workers on a lot of these farms were palestinians that they got work visas in in fact one of the women she used to drive to the border and pick up sick children from gaza drive them to an israeli hospital have them treated drive them back they were advocates if you saw that uh, there was the girl who was pulled out of the jeep with the gray trousers mm. So she was a massive activist for peace. She used to push for, we can, we can live together, let's live together, let's just all be free together. Mm. And the reason why Hamas could execute the invasion so specifically and so quickly was because of all the inside information that the Palestinians who were working for the Israelis in those kibbutz fed back. So they knew the security codes, they knew where the guns were kept, they knew who the head of security was, they knew where the children were, they knew how to, you know, they knew what time to hit when it would be most shocking. Mm. So the betrayal, when these people were actively trying to engage in a relationship and having some sort of unity, is, it's, it's, broken it's really it must it's be so broken. hard to, yeah. to to you know and then i, I mean I, I, it's really difficult because i don't people say that if you have the, the other thing is we've all become very divided about this issue so yes, it's like if I you know. feel if you if you like release these innocent people these were innocent people that were massacred it doesn't yeah. matter you know and people are like well you well what about what's going on in gaza and i'm like well i i also think that's, that's appalling right. yes absolutely I, I you can think both things are appalling and dreadful yeah without having to pick a side why yeah. do you think as it, it, maybe is is it is it do you have a view as a Christian why we are entering again a new world of everyone has to have a pick a side about everything and that we don't we don't have this place where we can talk anymore? Yeah. Everyone is just pulled in one direction. And it's I find that really strange. I, I, I think it's a it's multi-layered. 
I do think we've come away from this idea of being a community and giving to others and preferring others over ourselves. I think we're generally quite selfish and selfishness will lead to us not working as a, as a tribe, togetherness, that village, you know, that village mentality yeah. of um, when we used to be able to leave our doors open, there was more trust because we would look out for each other. Now everyone's on their own path, which creates arrogance, I believe. Yeah, and narcissism. Narcissism, yeah. I mean, we're more narcissistic than ever and mm. social media helps, doesn't it? Yeah, really, you really know? brilliant. It's like the the banal content that people share, which is why I've avoided it for years, yeah. because I just thought no one cares about that. Surely if this is the example that all of these now 25-year-olds who are out marching and saying let's commit genocide, basically, and wipe a whole entire nation out of the Middle East... Uh, they just believe this arrogance of my opinion is the correct one. But what's interesting is I've been to Israel. I've We work a lot with the Jewish community. And the only message we hear is Hamas, the terrorist organization, which is a proxy of Iran, which is the Islamic, Islamic Republic, which they've got no rights now. Iran has changed completely. Mm. Um, they are terrorists. They need to be taken out. Um, it's awful that anyone innocent should die. You can dialogue. You can say, no, it's awful. They want to help the humanitarian aid. Um, but when you speak to somebody who hates Israel, there is no dialogue mm. whatsoever. You just get shouted at. How many hostages are there still? hundred and About 136. So there's 136 still um, being held Yeah, captive. including a toddler and a baby. Yeah, a baby who turned one. Yeah. As when, when we went, it was actually yes, almost yeah, that day, he was, wasn't it? Yeah. And... So, without needing to be a geopolitical expert, yeah. you would turn around and say, if you release the return those hostages to us, yeah. then the conflict, the ceasefire is, is finished. Is, is, is possible, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's all they said. Return the hostages, and that's it. So, why would a normal? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm asking you, but it just seems to be very normal thinking to turn around and Absolutely. say, release these hostages, I, uh, because actually, it, is it? You know, I, I don't know what to believe anymore when yeah. it comes to what I'm told in the news. I, I don't know what to believe. Understandable. I understand that, you know, there are, because we've seen the footage of these tunnels that are going underneath, you know, municipal buildings, schools, yeah. hospitals and things like that. So it's going to be very difficult to um, take out a terrorist organisation when they're camped no. directly beneath a maternity ward, for yes. example, something like that. Yeah. And I imagine that the Jews and the IDF have thought really carefully about how, that I don't think, I never get the feeling from all of what is said, even from people like Netanyahu, who I find a bit, yeah, um, that they want to, that they ever would like to take an innocent life. They do not. But what are they meant, to, I don't understand. Right. What's they, the solution then? Yeah. What do we do? Do we just let them stay in power when they have said, Sinwa, the leader of Hamas, has said, we will continue repeating October the 7th on October the 8th, 9th, inferring we're going to keep going. We're never going to stop mm. until... Palestine is free from the river to the sea. Yeah. But that is not Palestine. This is Israel, mm. a legitimate country. And you can't just call for a genocide and everyone be okay with it. I find that argument it's really strange as well. Strange. It's like, why everyone will, will criticise, immediately criticises Israel to get all the talks about the fact yeah. it's on stolen land. But you don't get the same thing from Zelensky mm -hmm. or yeah. Putin or someone like that. You don't say, well, you know, a large proportion of... Uh, Eastern Ukraine is Russian speaking and yeah. all that. No one, to, uh, no one gets into the sort of uh, the nuance of of the yep. Israel Palestine situation. It's like Israel bad, um, Palestine good, which yeah. is yeah, I understand it fits <clears throat> the oppressor oppressed narrative. Of, yes, and you know that's why the left left in Britain love it so much yeah. because they thrive on that. Mm -hmm. And do you think the the Labour Party and the left wing parties in the UK are anti Semitic institutionally? I think they were mm. absolutely. I think I mean when Jeremy Corbyn was, um, it was like a nod. Perhaps he might be the leader. I decided I would move back to New Zealand. Straight really? away, yeah. What if he was going to get elected? Yes, because I don't want to be in the country that has elected a person that says my friend's Hamas 
which mm. is when he introduced them. And I know that that can be a very British way of introducing someone in a polite way. Yeah, but, you really... but why would you say, you wouldn't say that to ISIS or Bin Laden, no. but you're saying it to Hamas. And if you did, you'd be can you should. You should be cancelled. Be cancelled. <laughs> the <laughs> fact that we cancel people so easily about for nothing. Um, so it's interesting, though, this whole stolen land issue, because why are we not having this? Why has Jordan... Jordan was created at the same time as Israel was. Mm. The whole area was called the British Mandate of Palestine, which was the whole area was called that. And actually, in, this, in Germany, in the Second World War, that's what the Nazis were saying to the Jews, go back to Palestine, that's where you're from, because it was a region that was run or, you know, op controlled by the British. Mm. Um, and then they said, we need a two-state solution. So the two-state solution is, has already been done, which is why we have a huge piece of land called Jordan for the Arabs, because they didn't want to live with the Jews. And then the Jews have this much smaller part of the land called Israel. Mm. But why are we not having this conversation about Pakistan and India? Mm. This was also a British mandate that also was created, but why are they not stealing land? Why is it Israel stealing land when actually they you know archaeologically are from that place it doesn't make any sense to yeah. me and it's and um your husband was saying to me that yeah. that people are sending their children muslims are sending their kids from the far east from the middle east sorry to british universities and they they're coming back radicalized from British universities. Yes. That's terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying. They're complaining that their kids are too radical yes. from coming to spend time in the UK. Yeah. And these marches, I find them... I, They're I would, deeply disturbing. And relentless. Yeah. And, I, 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 you know, I'm sort of struggling at the moment because obviously the job of any religion, like, you know, your parents yes. as missionaries, was to go and, and say, look, Jesus... Christ died for your sins and yeah. you know you 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 want to convert people but in Islam it seems the same thing is true but yeah. we've got whole tranches of London and other parts of this country where it, there's not even a, a desire to particularly live side by side at all no. or or to or to engage with with people you don't get yeah. these huge i can't think of a single like, really prominent powerful muslim leader who's come out and led the charge on yes. condemning all of all of this stuff and i think that silence yeah. speaks volumes it does to me dietrich bonhoeffer in the second world war was a pastor a christian pastor and he actually saw what was happening in nazi germany and could see this awful rhetoric which was being perpetuated against the Jews and it was framing them as rats and framing them as the cause of all of the societal problems and as the as the war sort of progressed he saw that Hitler was very evil and actually tried to assassinate him and he said silence in the face of evil is evil itself mm. not to not to speak is to speak, mm. not to act is to act. And so the fact that there is so much apathy and silence from the church when we have open calls for intifada in London to Gaza, from London to Gaza we call for intifada. This is not a deeper understanding of the divine in that context. Contextually speaking, they're calling for intifada when we last had intifada or when Israel has suffered intifada for 30 odd years, it means going up and blowing up Jews mm. and whoever else is, happens to be in the location. And why are we OK with that? I, I, it, well, the apathy, I think, is what is so concerning. Yeah. What about the, the wall? So were there any Jews in Jordan? before? Yes. Yeah. And Gaza. Yeah. In Gaza, Jews had lived there for, for millennia. Mm. And... Every single war that Israel has ever been involved in is a defensive. They were attacked first. Mm. So any country in the world who is in, attacked by an invading foreign army, you know, it's called defense, you know, yeah. but why are they not allowed to defend themselves? Well, 3,000 people died, 3,000, uh, nearly 4,000 people died in the Twin Towers and the punishment of that was a million dead Iraqis. That's right. So, you know, and where are the people these people that are silent yeah. about this sort of thing. Or well, what Assad's done, he's almost killed 800,000 people in Syria. I don't see anyone marching. Mm. No one's marching, no one cares. No it, one seems to care about the Christians being slaughtered in Nigeria. 
No, those black lives don't matter. Those, no, they don't. That's right. And the black Jews, Jewish lives don't matter. Apparently now Jews are this colonial white figure, yes. which is completely taking away their identity. So Jewish experience, Jewish history, Jewish... Everything about Judaism is being appropriated and taken away. And people don't understand that before the Torah was, or the Ten Commandments were given to Moses, Judaism was already a thing because it's a bloodline, it's an ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of colonialism is just is so arrogant and misunderstanding what Judaism is. It's not like Christianity. You could go and convert to Islam this afternoon, so could I. Anyone can convert to Christianity, but you can't convert to Judaism mm. like that. It takes about five years. You have to live with an Orthodox family for five years. You have to understand. You have to go through a really deep process um, because it's a birth line. It's a, mm. You bleed Jewish. You yeah. don't bleed Christian. And also I find it interesting that the... the um, that Tel Aviv is renowned, world renowned as being a sort of very rainbowy, yes. for a better word, city. You know, very <laughs> liberal, highly liberal, mm -hmm. very left leaning, tolerant of um, you know gays and, yep. and you know, and it's apparently meant to be one of the best places to go and have a holiday. Because yes, it's it is. Just it's a amazing. really vibey place. Yeah. So you would have thought mm -hmm. that the rainbow crowd, the LGBTQ plus 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 anti racist crowd, yep. would love the. Israelis. You would. Jews. Well, but especially what, when the the opposite is you have in Gaza, you're thrown off the buildings. Yeah, you're quick. murdered for being gay. Yeah. So, and then you see queers for Palestine. It's like chickens for KFC or something. It just doesn't make any yeah. sense. Turkeys for Christmas. Yes. It makes yeah. no, it, it doesn't make any sense unless the thing is that this woke LGBTQ, LMNOP, alphabet soup of yeah. um, diversity, equity and inclusion and anti-racism is actually just a front. It's just it a cover. I agree. I think that <coughs> anti-racism is just racism with the word anti it is. in front of it. Absolutely. And I think I, the worst thing you can be is, like you, a white. It's pale, stale male. male. Straight as well. And straight, you know. Yeah, it's terrible. So what... So. In that, you know, the anti-racist movement, you would expect to be going, would be, be on side with the you would. Jews, but it's not. We had a, we have a couple in our church called Gilbert and Sadie. They're 90 years old. They're from Jamaica. And they said to us the other day, we do not understand what the BLM movement is doing. When we came to this country, we walked into many parts of London and it said, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Mm. And the only people in London that would employ us, that would rent to us, that would be friends with us, are the Jews. Wow. And I said, well, then you need to be a voice because the the generation that is that is around now are not getting that message. They mm. think the Jews are the oppressors. Everything that the Jews are victim of, they're being accused of being the aggressor of. Yeah. And, you, and also, I mean, if you're really aggressive, you don't build a massive wall around yourself. That's not what an aggressive, that's not an aggressive gesture. That's no. a defensive gesture. That's, that's like right. a shield. Yes. Um, and also, it was only, a, there's only a fence. People see this. I mean, have you seen what they've done in Egypt? Egypt doesn't even want one Palestinian. Why does Egypt not want the Palestinians in? Because they know what they're like. It's a terror base. But so let's flip that on its head. And I'm the devil's advocate. Yeah, here. please. What, um, what, what? When you say we know what they're like, what, yeah. what are the Palestinians like? So when I say we know what they're like, the why hasn't Egypt? And so they look at the history, and what's inconceivable, I think, to most normal people is that a whole entire region could be indoctrinated to hate with such passion that martyring themselves is the goal in life that death is the goal in life mm. and it's a death it, it was that what I, what struck me is the footage was how much they loved it yes that was the bit that i was so shocked yeah. the, and the fact that they 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 never they were constantly going you dogs we look i killed yes. i've killed 10 I killed dogs it. killed it i killed 10 of the 10 yeah. of the dogs so this, you've got this whole base of terror, which from UNRWA to providing education for children, their television shows, it's propaganda 
like 101. Right. It's unbelievable from the What's, age of... Just tell us what UNRWA is, just for those that don't know. It was something like the United Nations. United Nations Relief... And work agency for... For Palestinian for refugees, something Palestinian like that. Palestinian refugees. Yeah. And so this is an organisation which is inherently corrupt. And the textbooks, even when they just teach maths, it will be giving you an example of an elevating an actual terrorist that would have blown up a Jew or killed a Jew. And like... Like even the questions are framed around terrorism. And because this is so inconceivable to the West, because we are used to, we think that we're the centre of the universe, like our news is the most important, our country is the most important. And we couldn't, ne we could never imagine a whole entire country being so corrupt that it would actually abuse its own children in such a way that teaching them to kill and hate Jews is normal, you know. How, how, do, how you know, I, I'm, how, how what is going to happen? What what will happen, do you think? Well, is this just going to get worse and worse and worse? Because they say that, you know, the other thing I notice, which is really uncomfortable for people um, who say, you know, Hamas, a, a terrorist organisation, was the many in the streets that used, would follow these bodies back in. And they it always sort of engaged in them, these little boys spitting over the side of yeah. trucks and stuff. When, you, when you're debased to that level of hatred for another human being, mm -hmm. what is the answer? What will what is is there ever going to be a solution, or is it just going to get worse and worse and worse? It needs a de radicalization, but it's almost worse than the Nazis because although they haven't killed as many people as the Nazis did, the Nazis created the gas chambers because it was affecting the soldiers having to kill so many people. So right. they created a, an environment which would be helpful for the Nazis because they used to have to get drunk and yeah, drown yeah. and forget. So let's just kind of make it a bit more clinical. Yeah. Kill them all in a gas chamber and then burn them and we don't have to deal with it. Yeah. But Hamas enjoyed it. You they saw really it. Did. They were happy. They and they were they were happily did it with their hands mm. and would do it as much as possible and called their parents, as you said. Yeah. I, I think from my perspective as a minister, I I do think this is we're just seeing Ezekiel. Um, 30, 738 workout, which is What's the that? prophecy in the Old Testament. So the Tanakh, we call it the Old Testament, but it's a Jewish book written by Jews for Jews. And it's called the Tanakh. And it's a book of the Bible that would be in your Bible, my Bible. And it says that in the last days, when we're coming into the period of the last, you know, before the world ends, basically, there is going to be an alliance. And it says that God is going to have brought back his people, i.e. the Jews, into the land of Israel, who had been scattered by the enemies. So it says they're going to be brought back into the land of Israel. And it said, on an unsuspecting people, one day they're going to be attacked. So maybe this recent attack was that. Mm -hmm. And then it said there's going to be an alliance with Russia and all of the Istans, Iran, Basically, everyone that we're seeing now work out, and they're all going to invade. Invade Israel. Invade Israel. And then, and then going... Armageddon, which is what what it says, is go. Then the Messiah will come down and destroy them. So it does it, feel. Uh, so and I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that the 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 crazy unstableness of the world, yeah. which everyone can feel, it does feel like we're entering some pretty. Dark. Um, yeah, dark. where do we go exactly? Well, I don't know how you could solve that if you're if you're teaching a kid to hate Jews and yeah. if Jews are taught to, you know, fear, you know, I, I don't know what, whether, you know, but they, they the Abraham Accords were, were signed, weren't they, when yeah. Trump was in charge and they seem to be... Jews are not taught to hate them. They're taught to love and to be caring and try and find a way forward. There is no hatred. You won't find any textbook in schools. What about the, uh, the criticism? Okay, let's throw in a few of the criticisms that I get told. Um, the, the Jews planned it, allowed it to happen, although they didn't get in quick enough. They were, yeah. Why did it take them so long to respond? And when people say that, they're just ignoring the actual facts. So when, when this invasion occurred, Hamas sent over thousands of rockets. So the Iron Dome is looking up. This enemy is an enemy that they know, Israel knows. 
and they have never attempted a ground invasion. So you know when you, it's like the Titanic, it's unsinkable. Yeah, yeah. But the one thing they didn't think about was we might hit an iceberg and they might at the same time have a fire in the boiler, you know, and the, the things that happened in Titanic. Mm. And I think it's that sort of situation. It's like a Titanic moment. Did the Titanic know that it would sink? No. Did it really truly believe it was safe? Yes. I think the same same thing happened in Israel. And it was a very well-coordinated, well-planned, and it had taken over five years of planning and training Hamas knew exactly what they were doing. They took out the communications tower, so it confused everyone. They distracted by sending rockets over. Then they invaded on land, air, and sea. I, I never quite understood how the how the parachute people got into the air. Yeah, I don't know because it was electronic. I don't know. Oh, well, I oh mean, yeah, they had um, they had uh, fan, yeah fans fan motors. Back. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's a really carefully planned, very carefully executed operation. And they've found the, you know, the plans and the the notebooks and the training guidance, and it was it was well coordinated. Mm. And um, you're you're a Christian, so yes. you you're part of this because you wanted people to feel that it wasn't just the Jewish community that was standing in uh, solidarity with each other. Yeah. You wanted people to know that the Christian, you as a Christian and, and the Christian action against anti-Semitism was, were standing together. And, you know, we've seen the same with them, um, with all, you know, with the Alison Pearsons and the Toby Youngs yes, and that sort of fantastic. Lot. But these people are, uh, are, are called evil and wrong for... No. For that I find that so terrifying in terms of like the world more broadly as you know doing what you do for a living and having you know you're spending a lot of time ruminating and thinking what you, do you think we're we're heading towards the end now do you think mankind is can survive this level of aggression mutual you I feel that people so. really don't like each other yeah I don't think there's the the sort of love feels like it's just diminishing. And if we take one Corinthians thirteen, where we love is patient, love is kind, love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Everything that the Bible or the Word of God says that love is, we're quite far even from how we love each other and our partners. And we see, you know, breakups that happen a lot. I've I've had a divorce, yeah. um, and it's because that whole putting others first is now not even a notion. Yeah. It's not really a notion. And you know, it says it says in the in the scriptures, it says that in the last days people will be mockers of their parents, you know, they'll be disobedient, they'll be mockers of God. They'll be like, "Yeah, God, where is God? He doesn't exist." That right will be called wrong, wrong will be called right, dark will be light, light will be dark. And yeah. it feels like this is where in this situation where it is upside down because I'm, I can. I will happily sit down with anyone and say, okay, tell me what you think. Let's look at the facts then. If we're going to go there, we, we can't just go on what we think. We have to go on actual fact. But you can't seem to have that conversation with yeah. most people. So it, it, what, were the, what were the other criticisms of the... Uh, the Genocide? Yeah. That, well, in terms of the... Do you think the response, Israel's response in... Gaza has been proportionate or do you think it's been I mean I saw Netanyahu yeah. said we're going to obliterate these people and I thought when he first said that I thought you just evil begets evil mm -hmm. but then I saw the, the footage and yeah. I and you know which apparently is propaganda for some reason I don't know why it is yeah um, why is that and then they're not you have to apply the same rules you right? do have to apply the same rules but do you think Israel's uh response has been proportionate or do you think I don't think there is moral, moral moral equivalency and proportionality in this because that would then infer that you have to do like for like so therefore Israel would have to go and behead babies mm. deliberately or they would then have to go and how do we how, what is proportionate in war yeah you well, know how do you do that so is it fair game then if Israel sends people over and they rape women until their pelvises break, mm. they they steal over 250 people, they injure 
six thousand. I mean, what what is the plan then? Well, you it's, know? Yeah, you've noticed in the te- in the tenor of the marches as well that the that when the solidarity marches for for Israel, they tend to be very quiet and orderly, and yes. you know people are sort of still in shock actually. Yeah. But then you get grief. these these grief. grief and and shock, and then you see the other marches, and and they're they're not peaceful. They're, they're there's a there's a sort of joyfulness to yeah. it. And that's the bit that worries me, that, that, that it suddenly burst out before yeah. Israel had even done anything in response, mm-hmm. that people were going, yeah, brilliant. Because it's about Jews. I find that terrifying. Yeah. I, I do think it's spiritual. Yeah. I do, because it doesn't make sense. And because I know that might seem very childlike to say, if it doesn't make sense, then it must be spiritual. So let's pin no, it on the spiritual it's... thing. But when you look at the facts... How can people do this? And we were talking about assimilation, actually, my husband and I last night. And when you look at the Jewish community in this country and wherever they go, they assimilate very well into the culture. They respect the culture and then they try to add value. Mm. So every Jewish person every day will say the Shema, which is saying there is one God and it's the same Shema that the Christians would say if they say it. And then they pray for the government and they pray for the king or the queen and they pray for the residents. That Is that including the very ultra-Orthodox? You everyone. Know, right. Every, everyone, if they practice Judaism, because it's two separate things, religion. Right. You know, they're an ethno-religious group, yeah. which people forget. Um, and when we were talking about um, the black community with Gilbert and Sadie, we, they had their 90th birthday. And we were saying that the black community that have come over from many different countries have assimilated really well. But then there seems to be pockets of people that have come over, reject our way of living, reject our way of doing things and want to impose a new way. You know, there's a new kid in town. Yeah. And that's quite scary because then we say, OK, fine i mean we don't really stand for anything anyway anymore well, so. we, we, i think in the bible you know obviously no theologian or religious scholar but it, it's render to caesar and uh, render unto caesar what is caesar's you know and that's right and that's basically a command for christian people to, yes. to have an earthly legal system yeah and follow know, the rules follow the law of the land to know it and I keep asking because there's some quite there's some people I really like and I want to sort of talk to and debate with because I, I really want to understand the issue more. But the, I, every time I ask those two questions, which is which law matters more, British law or Sharia law, mm-hmm. and what is the age of you know permitted sexual intercourse between men and women, yeah, and, and that those two things seem to be quite culturally very very. Um, different to what goes on in in England and we've seen a lot of this cultural self-isolation yeah. uh, in Muslim groups now and you know I don't want to the the difficulty is you, you know these are people of faith too Muslims Absolutely. so, so you, you've got to find which a needs w- to be respected you've you know, got I've to got find, many good Muslim friends yeah you've got to find a way of doing it but it, uh, as a is it, you know, you're right about the fact that Jews seem to integrate quite well into society and um, Indians seem to Absolutely, integrate yes. Really well. But you do get certain pockets of uh, immigrants from certain places yeah. who seem to be, you know, very represented in, over-represented in, yes. in, you know, certainly in the grooming gangs that have gone on mm-hmm. in, in England and stuff like that. So, I mean, what... As a nation, do you think we've lost our sense of identity, what it is to be British? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when we went through that phase, and I don't know if it's still a thing, but when the Union Jack was seen as a right-wing racist symbol. I think they did. Uh, I think it was that was quite recent. Yes. Someone was I don't know if we're it. over that period, but, I mean, it's insane. No. Um, I think we don't really stand for anything because we accept everything, which is really great because we're tolerant. Mm. But we've become so tolerant that we have really compromised massively who we are. And Who are we, do you think? I, I don't know. I don't think we know. Mm. I don't think we know. And what I liked about the Queen, and I, I, I love the royal family. I think that it's, it is a great um, tradition. Mm. And brings, Better than President Blair, in a way. Yes, yeah. Mm. 
And I did love the Queen. Really, she really stood for being truly the head of the church, which is really great. And then King Charles came out and said, well, I might be the head of the church, but I'm, I'm the protector of all faiths. Mm. Which it's not what it says great. On the, it's not what it says on the coin. It says defender, fidelis defensor, isn't it? It's defender of the faith. Yes. And so therefore, which is amazing, and I love that he's now the defender of the Jewish faith and brilliant, let everyone practice what they want to practice. But when their practice means trying to dominate what you're head of, mm. that's a problem mm. to me. I well, think it's, where a, do it's, it's a problem with Batley Grammar School teacher. It's a problem with this, um, you know, with the fact that we don't have blasphemy laws in this country, and yet, you know, depict, showing a depiction of the Prophet Muhammad is, you know, as you saw in Charlie Hebdo, it was really, it was really, a really not, bad. Yeah, very dangerous thing to do. It's yeah. a bad thing. So, um, but you, you say you've got a lot of Muslim friends, moderate yes. Muslim friends, who are, who you don't have any difficulties with no and in actual fact i know a lot of muslims i know a lot of iranians and um a lot of devout muslims that feel the same way as i do right. they know that iran the icrg the islamic regime of iran that kicked out the true rulers of iran 70 years ago and has changed iran into this place of death and terror who have got yes yeah. who have got all of these proxies hezbollah hamas um the islamic brotherhood the muslim brotherhood the islamic jihad the houthis the fruit of their activity is death and destruction yeah so the tree is obviously not a good tree right does that make sense yeah, that yeah, metaphor? Yeah. it's like a very biblical one isn't it jesus said you will know me by by the fruit you will know who is mine by their fruit yeah. what is the fruit of their life you know, the fruit of the spirit, which is kindness, goodness, understanding. So are they blah, just blah, blah. misrepresenting? Are they misrepresenting the teachings of Muhammad, or are they well, taking, or are they, are they cherry picking certain bits and using those as excuses? Because yes. there, there must be bits in the Bible, as or in certainly in the Old Testament, that I mean, say some pretty horrendous things. Absolutely, and I I do believe that. And the conversations that I have with my Muslim friends, they don't understand what is going on. But they can't speak out because they get shunned. Right. So now it's become a very popular trend. It's like the ice bucket trend, but a really hateful one. Mm. Where you go marching every single week. And in Scotland, um, there was a Jewish man walking by a rally. Did you see that in the news? He had a kippah on. Yeah. And the police went up to him and said, you need to remove your kippah if you're going to walk by here because it will be triggering to the crowd. I know, which I thought was, you know, isn't it insane that in 1939, yes, uh, well, actually before, all the way back through the 30s in Crystal Mact and various, that, you know, and after the Jews were forced to wear a yellow star, mm -hmm. and now you're being told to cover it up in That's what right. is meant to be a secular liberal democracy yes. in the United Kingdom. And where is the king? He said he's the protector. So please protect the Jewish people. Yeah, it's a very good point. He has, well, he's in hospital, so maybe he's... Yeah, he's, maybe, he's been maybe, poorly, I understand. Maybe he's um, been poorly, but it, it, it terrifies me that this sort of, you know, we've all got to be really inclusive. Let's yeah, all be inclusive, yeah. except for you. Exactly. And you, and yeah. you, and you. Because you're a filthy pig, I, and we want to kill all of your relatives that have lived in Israel for 75 years. I think it's in... I think what we're going through, what we're witnessing is the death of God in people's yeah. hearts, mm -hmm. in this certainly in this country. And, you know, obviously church attendance falling off a cliff. Yeah. The Church of England are trying to... I mean, they, they, they've sort of embrace the diversity equity and include inclusion movement but to me diversity equity and inclusion and the woke woke thing is a religion a secular religion it absolutely and is and it's 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 horribly brutal mm -hmm. and 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 really has done more damage to certainly this country than anything else yeah. and and it uses minority groups to yeah. to latch onto and grow and it's being taught to all of our kids in school i got an email from my my um youngest son's school and it's talking about its diversity equity and inclusion policy and getting together and meetings and all of this sort of stuff and i'm just like you're yeah. you're 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 brainwashing an entire generation of children yeah. and I, all these people that come out of university who you're not allowed to offend I know. which means to say to not offend someone is to say that you don't want you cannot talk to them because right. someone is always going to be offended by yeah. something aren't they yes, so we're stopping absolutely. I, I have a feeling that the conversation is kind of stopping 
So we're not, but so it's we're by being tolerant, we have become completely intolerant. Yeah. So therefore, the converse of what we attempted to do is what's the reality. And I, I think, and I don't want to be unkind, but I do feel like there is not strong leadership in this area from the church. They won't go near it. They won't go near it. And no you know, one will go near it. Their politicians won't go near it. I know. And it's very disappointing when, for example, Archbishop, they do great things. The church is was the birthed many amazing things in the world, but it also has a very dark history, especially with their treatment of Jews. Mm. You know, 70% of Nazi Germany was uh, Protestant. Mm. They were Lutherans. Mm. But then, you know, we think, well, the great reformist Martin Luther, he wrote a book called On the Jews and Their Lies. And in that book, it says the best, the most Christian thing you can do is round up all the Jews, put them in the synagogue and set it on fire. Martin Luther said Martin that. Luther said that he was the most anti-Semitic Jew hater you can even imagine, but he is he is elevated as a church father. So 70% of Nazi Germany was Lutheran. I didn't know that. This, yes. See, this is, I get taught this stuff in school, like the, the, yes. the cathedral at Wittenberg. Yeah, like, wow, he, he really nailed it to the mast and opened it up to everyone. But he, he actually said that. was... He wrote a book called On the Jews and Their Lies. Google it, read it. I've got it. I'll give it to you. It is the most anti-Semitic, disgusting filth you have ever read. The fact that he says as a church leader, the most Christian thing you can do, they killed our saviour after all. And actually, even on that, I've heard people say this, Christ killers. You must have heard that about yeah. the Jews. Um, if you as a Christian believe that Jesus died for your sin then you put him on the cross. If you believe that the Jews killed him, when it was actually the Romans anyway, if we want to be technical, mm. um, if you believe that it was the Jews, then he didn't die for you. So mm. therefore, how can you even be a Christian? Mm. Because then there is no exchange of mm. you know, forgiveness, covering of transgressions. Mm. And so 70% of Nazi Germany were Lutheran. The rest of them were Catholics. And the overwhelming majority was completely silent, apathetic, talking about women in leadership like this. And then we're seeing right now calls for intifada, which is a violent uprising against Jews. We're seeing Jews having to remove their kippahs just to walk past people who are chanting for their homeland to be genocided. Yeah. And um, Justin Welby's talking about climate change. Yeah, I mean, that just drives... I, I can't get my head around. I know we're meant to really love one another, but this, we commanded to, but this um, this man who's in charge of the Church of England, it doesn't... It's worrying. It's like, it, it doesn't even feel like... I'm like, is he working for... Which which guy is he working for? I can't tell. I mean, I don't want to... It's not no. my job to judge him, but everything that's happened, you know, is seems to be anti-doctrine, doctrinal, yes, anti-Christian. Right. Again, it's all about, like, well, let's just move our religion around to fit yeah. in with you lot. Yeah. And it, 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 it seems to be a very dreadful thing to do. Because yes. if, if you don't have... A, our values are based on all of this stuff, are based on DJ Christian values, that it, we're not built we're not an islamic country are we so no. what's going to happen but maybe we are maybe well, this is where we're going well it is where we're going because we're not re we're replacing ourselves at about 1.6 when it should be 2.1 to carry on replacing a population yeah and our po and our population has gone up from 1997 by 11 million so that's that's immigration yeah and you know uh, I, I don't know what the exact percentile of uh, uh muslims is in Britain is, but it's obviously growing. Yes, At some point, um, we will, in a few generations, Britain will be finished. Well, the th this is how I see it. You cannot blame the Muslims. They're doing their job. Yeah. They're doing a great job. Yeah, of having babies. Their book for them. commands them, convert people, mm. and they're obviously attracting people because there's lots of people converting to Islam. So we can't blame Islam. We have to look at ourselves. What are we doing to actually stand for something as Christians? And there's so much wishy-washy. What does it even mean? You know, do you even need to stand for anything? And we're not doing our job properly. Mm. If we did our job properly and we really showed who Jesus Christ actually is in terms of he was the kindest in the room, he was always, 
you know, the woman who should have been stoned because she was an adulterer, according to the law of the land of that day, he was like, well, no, actually, you who was without sin cast the first stone. He was always the gracious, always um, truly loving. And he stood with the Jewish people. You know, he didn't actually have any interaction in the scriptures with Gentiles unless they were people that loved the Jews. And in the New Testament, he says, do not become arrogant in your faith. For Christianity is a like a, a sapling, a grafted in, but the Jewish people are the, are the root, are the vine. Mm. And don't think that you're more important, but we've become elevated. Mm. It's the Jews that are irrelevant. Now it's the Holy Bible is ours, but that's actually their descendants. They are still that people. And we've we've come away from all of those Judeo-Christian values that actually made this country great. And now we don't stand for anything. And I don't believe we can actually blame Islam. I think we blame ourselves because we're not standing for anything because of its weakness. And we're not being what we're called to be. Um, which is to which is to be be a light be a light be be, a, be the best parent you can yeah you know teach your children all of the most important things that... and it doesn't mean you say okay everything is all okay because we're so kind and wishy washy and nice no. nice and kind are two different things and you can be loving but firm yeah. you know I love my children. But it doesn't mean I just give them anything they want and accept whatever they want to do because I love them so much. Mm. You know, I love them, so I give them boundaries and I mm. love them so much that I will direct them when they're wrong and I will discipline them in a way that is appropriate if they s- step over the line so they understand consequence. Mm. And that is what a loving relationship looks like. Mm. A husband and wife. My husband and I have all sorts of boundaries to keep our relationship safe, our family safe, like you will have with your partner, like which is how we're supposed to be. Um, but we're very far away from that now. Yeah, because Pete, I don't think people understand the the actually how important the family is. People see like like I, the, the number of um, girls and boys but mainly women, actually, that I've spoken to who see their life as like, you know, marriage is like a stage of their life that they go through and then like start a marriage or, you know, and they see it's like, no, this is a, this is a me. This is the biggest decision you're ever going to make in your life. Yes. And not only if you break that promise that you've made before God, uh, unless you've, you know, done a sort of civil civil ceremony yeah. which is fine do it you still but you still t- made a legal yes. at least an earthly legal covenant but also a, a much higher legal covenant yeah. and that with that comes children mm-hmm. that when you break up a family you it's just it's, consequences and what happens when it when the family legal system in this country is so um, baited towards the mother yes. and it's and it's completely anonymous so you can't say anything yeah uh, and what happens when people get divorced and when a father is not around? You know, if you don't have a dad and a mum, you need both. You really. do. But it's a lot of the crime statistics in this country, for example, yeah. come from the fact that kids don't have dads around. Absolutely. To, 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 you know, We've devalued the, the importance and the imperativeness of having a father in, in, a, in a home. Mm. And I don't want to judge people. Obviously, people get divorced for many reasons when there's unfaithfulness or abuse. I understand that. Um, but we, are, we do seem to throw in the towel very easily. Mm. And yes, I think the laws in this country are very one-sided. And there's a lot of toxic women, unfortunately, because I think women are confused about what they should be. And if you're a powerful woman, this means you should do that. And Feminism. Feminism is now not even feminism. Actually, I went to a, um, a Jemaine Greer sit down because I went through like my book club with the, the ladies in my village. We were like reading what was one of her books, one of her books, uh, The Female Eunuch. Mm. So we went to a night with Jermaine Greer and she said the most feminist thing you can do right now in this generation is give up your job, raise your family, be a mother, invest in your community, go to the WI and femininity is powerful. Yeah. Be a female that is powerful in that femininity. You don't have to try and be a man. That's weird. And let a man be be his masculinity and celebrate that because that 
is the most cohesive thing we can do for a society. Yeah, and we've got we've sort of gone wrong. We're now getting yeah. you see these, uh, but you see highly successful women feminists yeah. on whatever, whatever wave we're on three or four. Yes, who are basically impersonating men. Yes, and then you get men who are impersonating women. Yeah, to try and you know sidle up to them. You know the male feminist. My, yes, my most disliked uh, sort of group in society. It's yeah. often the male feminists who have a problem with me. Because really? I, yeah, because ah. I go, I'm a man. And I'm a- Exactly. What is wrong with saying that? It's yeah. the way, as, as a minister, I see this is how God created a man to be a certain way and a woman to be a certain way. And together, with the different ingredients, together they cre- can create this amazing reflection and they are then the image of God together. It's not just a man is the image of God. It says they so are the we, image of God. Yeah, so, we need, so we need that. We need that. And that's family. Yes. And what do you make of the, the you know, staying on the on the family issue? The one thing that I find so pernicious about the trans movement moving into to younger and younger people and all of this, you know, defiling and desecrating bodies and permanently mutilating yes. them, making them infertile. Do you think that, where do you think that comes from? What's that? I, if you want to, if you were born a man, but you want to be called Shelley and be a woman, go for it, Mm. do that. But I think it crosses the line when you start pushing an agenda onto children and allowing, you know, if a child can't choose to have sex until they're 16, quite rightly, why can they choose to cut a part of their sexual organ or to stunt their sexual organ, mm. the growth. Why can it doesn't make sense? I think Why? It's, I, I, because I think it's purely satanic. I think I agree. I, I think the devil's having a great day. Yeah, because um, that desecrates what God created, right? Yeah. He, the image, his, his final, last creation was his best. The image of a man and a woman, and then yeah, mix it all up. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's yeah, satanic. It's, yes. it's 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 You're spot on. It's the new. It's horrible. It is, and it and it's not nice to live in. No, I, I, I've you know I sometimes I was thinking like if I did another job or if I did something else and I tried to ignore it, I'm like I wouldn't be able to. Yes, because people talk about it every, all everywhere. Yeah, everything's become politicized in this way. I know. It's really spooky. Well, I know if you don't have that opinion, then you cancel. Yeah, I've been cancelled many many times. Yeah, so cancel. what's your um? So what's your hope? What's your what's your? We've talked about the, the badness. And yes. what what do you see coming? So do you think we you think that essentially it's time for a bit of Armageddon and the Messiah? Well, I mean, it, it, he'll come when he is going to come. That's yeah. what I think. But in the meantime, it doesn't mean we give up. I think we just we we have to be the example of what we want this world to be. Mm. And I think we have to unite with like minded people, and we have to be um, project what we want the world to be. Mm. And I think that's the only way because we can't shout into the darkness and make the dark retreat going Mm. into a dark room and shouting at it to brighten will not make it retreat but if you bring a candle or you're the light in that room then the darkness retreats so I think the more of us that stand for the truth that we stand for light and I believe they're basic Judeo-Christian values of um, love and goodness and doing good for others putting others first is really putting, important yes 100 percent. in actual fact the bible goes to as far to say prefer one another like as in if we're going to sit down i prefer you to take it genuinely prefer you to have that mm. and if we live like that then we look after each other like in a marriage just if i don't think about looking after myself if i just look after my husband and if he looks after me then I don't have to look after me. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be self-help, self-love, self, 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 self. Yeah, the self is really... It's I like, find the, it, it's an idol. It makes me really depressed when I'm selfish. And yes. I, I realise that I'm, oh, I'm, I'm being... So that's good, be the change you want to see. I, yeah. That's and it. it sounds cheesy, but I think we've got no other choice. But we mustn't, we mustn't be apathetic. And I think it's very scary where... With this canary in the coal mine, what's happening with the Jewish people in this country, how they're being targeted, you know, the three young adults that were targeted because they were speaking Hebrew in Leicester Square mm. not so long ago, a woman, she was punched in the throat and she was called a dirty Jew 
you know, free Palestine. So a Jew in this country is being beaten up because a long way away in the Middle East, a war is ongoing. Yeah. It, this means it's not about that. Yeah. It's something very insidious. And if we sit by as the Christians of today and the moral people that we want to be, whether you're Hindu, Muslim, whatever, we are just going to see another repeat. Mm. I worry of that apathy, which is what we saw in the Second World War. And how can people um, how can people find you and what you do? And do you want to share any of your sort of information? Yes. So okay. you're, you've got a you you. I just so I'm really bad at social media, but uh-huh. I have recently started an Instagram page. Oh, so I'm trying. I don't know. I I need What's to. What's it called get... so people can come? So to... it's Rev Haley Ace. Mm-hmm. That's my personal one. And then our organisation is Christian Action Against Antisemitism. So if you want to go online, www.caaa.info or uh, Twitter. Yeah. I'm like completely plugging it. Yeah, okay. Plug it. Is at C-A-A-A UK. Brilliant. That's it. Yes. Well, I just want to say a personal thank you for you coming to talk to me. But really that that moment when I left, when I walked out and I just was all over the shop and you just came and... <laughs> oh, you come here. I was trying to hold this cup of tea. I know you were. And I could, it was going everywhere. Thank you oh. so much for having me, really. Well, I think it's really important that people know and, that, you know, I think it's important that people speak out because I think, as you say, apathy and silence is, is the major enemy. Yes. You're yeah. amazing. Thanks for you talking. You are. Thank you so much for just speaking out and being you. It's really important. God bless. <laughs> <laughs>